didn't have no power. Come on. They didn't, wasn't even concerned about him being resurrected. God had to send a woman to tell them because they was hiding for fear of the Jews. Jesus, I'm going to give you the keys. That's why the devil was after Peter. The devil's always after anybody that'll get out and walk on the water. The devil's always after anybody that has the keys. Somebody said, well, well, Peter denied Jesus three times. Sure he did. That's why Jesus put the devil on him. He said, the devil's going to sift you because there's some denial on the inside of you. And when he said, see, see, some people say, oh, Simon Peter, Simon Peter denied God. Well, sure he did. It was in him. Had to be sifted out. Come on. There's some stuff in you God will sift out. See, you ain't all wonderful like you think you are. There's some stuff in you that God will sift out. I, 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 know, I know you mothers, uh, I know when my kids, didn't the spirit of murder ever come on you? And you wanted to vote for abortion? Because your kids done something dumb and you just wanted to take their little necks and quirk. Y'all probably didn't, but I did, see. Now, see, that's a joke, but I, but I uh, you know, I got mad at my kids one time. I said a few cuss words. I know y'all don't cuss, but I, I, see, y'all had to pray for me. I said, oh, Jesus, I done cussed in front of my kids. I, what, I done cussed, and here I am preaching, prophesying. I done cussed in front of my kids. You know what? God said that cussing was in there, or it wouldn't have been able to come out. He said, now let me go ahead and sift that out of you and we're going to clean your mouth up. Because I didn't have a trashy mouth sometimes. It's the way I was raised, you understand. When moonshiners raise you, you have a colorful vocabulary. And half of it you don't even know is bad words until somebody starts telling you or until you say something and one of the mothers pass out in front of you and it wasn't the spirit. Then you say, whoa, that might have been a cuss word there. I've been using that word my whole life. So see, you'll have stuff on the inside of you. I always say Ishmael was in Abraham the whole time. If he wasn't, he would, couldn't have come out. And God had to get Ishmael sifted out of Abraham. See, you got Ishmael's on the inside of you. And sometimes you try to wrestle with your flesh and you condemn yourself and you get mad at yourself and you say, oh, there ain't no way I can do this ministry. I done lied, cussed. I done, I, there ain't no way I can do this. I, but that's God just sifting some impurities out. That's God just sifting your Ishmael's out. Thank you. Because after God gets them Ishmael sifted out, up behind that Ishmael is Isaac. But see, he has to get rid of your Ishmaels and bring you to the maturity of a full old age so you'll know what to do with Isaac when he comes. Amen? There's my offering. Thank you. <laughs> see, our problem is, bless you, sweet. <laughs> See, if Ishmael hadn't have been in there, he wouldn't have never been able to come out. That's why Sarah said, after she's the one that told Abram to go in the tent, that's why she said, this judgment be on you. You was the one with Ishmael, not, not me. Ishmael wasn't in me, Abram. He's in you and Hagar. Now, see, if it hadn't have been for your Ishmael in there, I could have done had my Isaac, but no. You got an Ishmael in there. So now you got to go fool around with Hagar because, see, it's not in me to make an Ishmael. It ain't in me to make an Ishmael. So what I got to do, I got to go find you a woman of the flesh. I got to go find you somebody to go in the tent with. I got to go find you somebody that can be equally yoked with you so you can get that Ishmael out so I can go ahead and have my eyes in. That's why Sarah said, listen, this judgment's on you. You're the one that had the Ishmael in the loins, not me. I've got Isaac waiting. To, I'm waiting to breastfeed Isaac. But we got to get your loins cleaned out so we can bring out. See, a lot of times God will clean our loins out. And a lot of times things come up out of us and we say, oh, God, I must not be saved. That's just, that's just God sifting you. 
Sometimes God will put somebody on your job and you'll say, Lord, I never wanted to cuss so bad in my whole life. I feel the anointing to cuss. I feel the anointing to give that sister the finger. Come on, these tapes ain't going nowhere. I'm just going to tell the truth. Lord, I feel, I, I feel the anointing to key that man's car after what he done to me. I, I feel anointed just to stand up and cuss everybody out in here. I feel the anointing of God on me. Somebody says, I, I, can't, I can't ever be a preacher and feel, you don't, Sister Connie, you don't know. Sometimes I just think, sometimes I just want to cuss. Sometimes I just want to, where is in there? In this flesh dwelleth no good thing. It's in there. I had to, bless you, sweetheart. I had this young boy at the church, and he is threatening to backslide every week. Backslide every week. I said, what are you going to do if you backslide? He said, I'm going to go down and get me a beer. I said, well, let's go. I'll go with you, and I'll sit down with you, and you can backslide and drink your beer, and then let's get in the car and come on up here and have evening intercession. Because if a beer can separate you from God, If you going down and drinking a beer can undo the crucifixion, then I'll go down there and have one with you. Now, if you're going to backslide, be serious about it and go backslide. But don't threaten God with a beer or a glass of wine. Don't threaten God with a cuss word. He ain't moved by none of that. He's heard it all. Don't threaten God with a, 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 a fuzzy navel drink. God ain't moved by fuzzy navels. You're going to threaten God, you, you need to go out and be a serial killer. Now, that might upset God. I said, well, let's go on down. I'll go with you. And let, let's, let's go. Uh, uh, he said, well, Reverend, ain't, ain't you, ain't, uh, what are you going to do in there? I said, well, I'll just talk to whoever's in there, see if, tell them what we're doing at the church, see if he might say, see, I ain't intimidated by nobody. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and I don't care what bar it is. God owns it. It's not being used for what it should be used for. Well, I might be too free for y'all in here, so. Because, see, my sister, my sister w uh, was managing a bar. And I said, I, I and, and she had got away from God, and she was managing a bar and into all kinds of stuff. And I woke up one morning, I told Curtis, I said, I'm going, I'm going down to see my sister at work. Curtis said, she's still managing that bar? I said, well, yeah, I think so. He said, you going to go in there? I said, in full and live in color. And I went in. I said, y'all got Pepsi in this place? Bring me one. Do y'all know who I am? I'm Jeannie's sister. They said, ain't you the preacher? That's right. I sure am. Glory to God. I sure am. Walked right in there. Come on. They, them people waited on me like I was God come in the flesh because I was to them. Somebody says, ain't you worried about your reputation? No, I lost that when I was in the world. I ain't worried about my reputation. Now, I ain't going to do nothing intentionally just to make people think I'm crazy. But, you know, I ain't going to live in no glass house. If I want to watch a video, I'm going to watch a video. Come on. I ain't going to live in no glass house. Because if my salvation is that easily taken away from me, See, now, 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 me and, see, I'm fixing to tell on myself. Is this all right? Me and Prophet Ash, you know them horror movies, all them vampires and stuff? See, I know y'all don't like them. Me and, me and Ash, me and Ash should get a stack of horror video because we'd rather watch a horror movie made in somebody's backyard than a good regular movie. We like vampires and werewolves and, and stuff like that. So me and Veron get a stack of them old horror videos, and, and we know everything they're going to say because we've seen them a hundred times. But we like them horror videos, amen? Now, y'all probably sanctified. Y'all don't watch them. And I was taking some back, that, and, and, and this lady that I know walked in, she said, uh, Reverend, you watch them movies? I said, Lord, yeah. She said, well, I can't watch them. It brings fear in me. I said, well, then don't watch them, for God's sake. But don't get, they don't me. 